record this. Just want to mention that if you're watching this uh, live or if you're watching this on YouTube, um, I'm trying to get more subscribers to my YouTube channel um, so that I'll reach the threshold of a thousand uh, subscribers. If you um, do watch my videos and like them, uh, I do suggest, I do ask you if you wouldn't mind subscribing. All you have to do is create an account and then you can subscribe to my channel. Then you get notifications when I post things. So, Tony, yeah. Can, can you put your YouTube details on the next uh, email you send around, please? I will, yes, I will. Yes. Thanks. Although you can just search for it on, the, on YouTube, just search for my name and, uh, and you'll find it that way. But I will put it in the email as well. So yeah, let's get started. I'm going to start by, uh, let me uh, share my screen with you. And I'm going to look at this hand from um, last week. Hopefully you can all see that. Let me just uh, minimize that. Hopefully you can all see this uh, uh, screen. Um, this was actually a hand played on Wednesday evening last week. And I know quite a few people from the Gentle Duplicate have started playing in the Pinner game on Wednesdays. And I came across this hand and I thought it was interesting to look at because it was one where nearly everyone was in the same contract of four hearts, but there was quite a variety of results. Some people made 12 tricks and others went down in four hearts. So I wanted to look at this being played in uh, a few different ways. And uh, really, there are quite a few things of interest in this hand. And sorry, what we're going to cover actually on this one hand are questions like, what should you choose as your opening lead? Taking advantage of the opponent's opening lead from Declarer's point of view. Something called vacant spaces we're going to talk about, which is um, catering to different distributions of the opponent's cards based on what you know, uh, either in the play or of the bidding, and how that might, might lead you to a better, uh, better choice in some occasion. And we also look, as we often do at Declare a Play, counting your losers. And there's another point from the defense about whether it's right to cover an honor with an honor. So on secondhand play, whether you should count uh, whether you should cover an honour with an honour. So that's what we're going to uh, cover today, all on this one hand. And let me just uh, rewind this. And I'm going to start actually with a question for you uh, on the subject of choosing an opening lead. So here, South opened one heart, U West over called three spades, that's a period, um, that's a preemptive uh, overcall there. And uh, North bid four hearts. This is very similar to how the auction went at nearly all the tables. There were a few differences. But I've got a first question for you, and I'm going to launch a poll in a moment, which is what would you lead on this hand? So have a little think about this. And in a moment, I'm going to launch a poll. And the question is what is your lead? Let me just go back. What happened? There? Okay, there we go. So let's um, end the poll there, and I'm going to share the results with you. And this uh, this is what you voted for. Um, the majority went for a diamond, fifty percent, and then uh, twenty three percent went for a heart. Uh, five people, 19% went for a spade, and one person chose, sorry, two people chose the ace of clubs. So let's have a look and see what we, uh, see what we think of that. And I'm going to talk about all those as possible leads, because it did make quite a difference as to what to lead there. So let's look at the spade lead to start with. Um, I'm quite attracted to a spade lead here, because I've got a long suit here. And 
it's very unlikely that leading that suit will help declare a set up tricks in the suit. I should say at the outset that any lead could be the winning lead, right? You, when you lead, you, you often are, are gambling about what to lead, but the spade lead is reasonably safe and it's reasonably attractive here. Also, it could lead to a, a rough for your partner if declared it has some length in spades. Um, maybe your partner will be able to rough a spade either immediately or later on. But um, the spade lead is reasonably attractive. So uh, that's one of my leads I'm thinking about. What about the heart lead, the singleton heart? Well, I don't like that lead because um, if I've got a singleton in the trump suit, it's quite likely that my partner has some length or strength in that suit. They may well have something like queen and two other cards. And if you lead a heart, you are helping declare a trap your partner's queen. So a singleton heart is probably a poor choice. Most of you chose a diamond. The uh, eight of diamonds is a normal diamond to lead if you do lead a diamond. And although that could work out well, I could uh, put up a hand where it worked out well, the risk of leading from a short suit is that you're helping declare establish tricks in that suit. If you can't get a rough, uh, which is the goal here, then leading the diamond will um, could help declare set up tricks in that suit. So it's a risky lead. It could pay off, but it, it does risk helping declare and then the last lead is the ace of clubs. Yes, if you're going to lead a club, you should lead the ace. But I think that's a particularly poor choice. Yes, I could make up a hand where it turns out to be the winning defense to lead the ace of clubs. But more often than not, if you lead the ace when you don't have the king, that's called leading an unsupported ace, you will be helping declarer. Think about it. Most of the time, declarer will have most of the points. And it's more likely than not that leading that ace will not be a good choice. So my vote on this hand is a spade. Um, uh, and second, I would perhaps choose a diamond and third, perhaps uh, a club or a heart. But I think the spade lead is the best lead here. Um, it's very unlikely to be helping declarer and you may even uh, you know, be able to get a rough uh, from your partner. Okay. Do you interrupt me if you have any comments or thoughts on that? Yeah. Tony, I have a question. Uh, in spade, could you lead from the top of the internal sequence? Okay. Thank you for that question. Um, so an internal sequence only counts as an internal sequence if, it, if the internal sequence is headed by an honor. So oh. if it was 10, if it was queen 10, 9, 8, then you might lead the 10. But when it's um, a sequence, but not headed by an honor, and the, the, the lowest honor is the 10, then it doesn't count, and you just leave your four highest. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments or questions on that? So um, we'll, we'll look at how it went on a variety of different leads in a moment. But um, this time it was played, and they did lead um, their uh, fourth highest uh, spade, they led the five of spades. And what we're going to do is look at this hand played in a few different ways. This is actually how it was played on the evening. I've just removed players' names because I don't really want to embarrass anyone. So let's look at this from Declarer's point of view. And you can see you've got a pretty nice hand there um, with the one heart bid, three spades, four hearts. They led a spade here. And what I'd like you to do is try to make a plan and to start by trying to count how many expected losers you might have in each suit. So let's assume you don't get a horrible break in any suit, but you don't get a really good break either. You sort of get just the average kind of breaks. I'd like you to count each suit one at a time. And in a moment, I'm going to launch a poll uh, and you're gonna tell me what, how many losers you think you have, how many potential losers you might have, let's phrase it that way. So we can't be certain about some of the um, suits, but how many possible losers do you have altogether? Take a minute, count up your suits and tell me 
how many possible losers you have. I'm going to launch a poll in a moment. And it's the last poll of the evening. And the question is, how many potential losers do you think Declara has? Give me a few more seconds to think about it. Okay, I'm going to end the poll there and share the results with you. And fairly even division there. Um, most of you saying three potential losers, some saying four, 32%, 28% uh, said two, and one person said five. So let's um, switch back to the hand and have a look at it and see what we think. Well. In spades, I don't think I'm going to lose any tricks because I've got the ace opposite a singleton, so no losers there. In hearts, I might lose one trick. I'm missing the queen here. And if I lose to the queen, uh, which could happen, I've got one possible loser there. So one heart, let's say. And what about diamonds? Well, um, I've got the ace, king, queen. Um, and if I think about it, I've got five diamonds in my hand and two in dummy, that's seven. So the opponents have got six. And if those are divided, say, four, two, then I do have a possible loser there, except I can rough that one in dummy, presumably. So if I do end up with a loser, if they don't divide evenly, I've possibly got one loser there that I can rough that. But I'll start by counting it as one loser. And in clubs, I have two potential losers. Yeah. Okay. So um, I I would say that I start off with one possible heart loser, one possible diamond loser, loser that I can rough in dummy if necessary, and two possible club losers. So perhaps four is the right answer, which I can reduce um, if I am able to rough a diamond in dummy, or if I can avoid losing to the queen of hearts. I can um, avoid that loser too. Interestingly, that when I say there are two club possible club losers, that is looking at the, the hand, looking at dummy and looking at my hand together. And that is slightly different from what you would say if you were using the losing trick count during the auction. So if South were using the losing trick count during this auction, that club holding would count as one loser because you've got the king. But once you see both hands, you count your losers in a different way. You count your possible losers and you can see you might lose two clubs. So, um, so I just mentioned that because I was asked recently about the difference between using the losing trick count, which you use in the bidding, to counting your losers, which you do during the play. So that's my uh, thought here. We're going to try to avoid the heart loser. And we'll see uh, if we can avoid the diamond loser as well. So let's see what happened on this hand. Declara here won the ace of spades. That was a good play. And Declara on this one started off by drawing trumps. Now, what's the best way to play trumps here? You've got the ace, jack, five, two, and dummy, and the king, ten, eight, seven, three in your hand. Now, if I put this suit combination into suit play, let me do, do that. I did that earlier. Um, what it's telling me is that I've got a 57.9% chance of making all five tricks. It's actually giving me two ways of playing this, either cash the ace um, and then cash the king, or cash the king and then cash the ace. So one is line A, one is line B. Um, and they're roughly equivalent, well, they should be roughly the same at 50, uh, roughly 58% chance of avoiding a loser here. But there's a difference this time. And the difference is that there's been some intervening bidding. So if I switch back to the actual hand, you can see that there was a three spade overcall from West. That means that West has got a lot of spades. Specifically, that should be showing a seven card suit. And if West has a seven card suit, it means he doesn't have so, 
many spaces for hearts. The way you work this out is if you think, okay, if West did start with a seven card suit, I started with three spades in dummy and one in my hand, that's seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. That meant that E started with two spades. Now you're making an assumption that you're trusting the opponent's bidding, but there's a very big clue here that West started with seven spades and E started with two spades. And if that is the case, that means that West has only six other cards apart from the seven spades that they started with. So there is this feature in suit play, which some of you may have come across, which is that you can change the analysis um, to, let me just uh, click this to change here. You can keep the same combination, but you can specify the number of vacant places. And what that means is that because we know West, we suspect West started with um, seven spades, they only have room for six other cards. And because he started with two spades, they have room for two other, uh, they, sorry, they have room for 11 other cards. So the number of vacant spaces at this point is that West started with, uh, West had six vacant spaces and East had 11 vacant spaces. Vacant spaces are cards that, in, in, apart from the suit that you've been, you've been looking at. So if I run this uh, slightly modified search now, suit play comes up with a much better line of success. Actually, it's a 75% line of success. And the way it's going to tell me to play this is um, actually to um, finesse against East, because East is much more likely to have uh, more spades than West here. So you should take advantage of that bidding in your play here and play it differently. And the way it's going to tell me to play it is to cash the ace and then um, after that wins the trick, then play um, a spade from dummy. Suppose I play the jack and unless the queen appears here, so if the nine gets played here, I should finesse. I should play low here. And uh, if, if the distribution is as expected, um, you will successfully finesse against the queen. And so it's saying not only do you have a much, it, it's, so it's giving you two bits of information that if you play this way, you can increase your chances of success to about 75% of making all five tricks and that you should finesse against the queen there. Okay. So if you take all that information into account, you have a, a better than uh, even chance of avoiding a heart loser and you will play it in, in that way rather than the normal way with nine cards missing the queen is just to play the ace and the king. But here, because of the bidding, you should assume that East is much more, more likely to have the queen of hearts there. Any comments or questions on that? So that's the, um, the idea of vacant spaces, and it can be quite useful for you, especially after a preemptive bid, to assume that most of the uh, cards, uh, other cards, are in the other hand. So let's go and see what this declarer did anyway. They won the ace of spades, and this declarer did not follow that guidance. They, they took their ace of hearts, and then they led a heart, and they played the king. And on this one, West discarded. So now he uh, declares going to lose to the queen. The queen is out. It's actually the only trump that's still out. Um, so declare did well here not to draw it and instead went about their other business. They started playing diamonds. They started playing the king and the ace. I'll just bring up the four hands now because declare is about to make a, a mistake here. They, they played the queen here discarding a <clears throat> club there, um, but they played the 10 here and maybe they thought their diamonds were good, but they, they're not. So East actually won that trick with a jack, whereas Declare could have roughed that. 
Um, East now cashed their good heart and they led the queen of clubs. And now declare as king is trapped and the opponents were able to defeat the contract uh, by making those clubs. And declare there went down making only uh, nine tricks um, rather than, as you can see, some others managed up to 12 tricks. Do interrupt me if you have any comments on that one. Let's have a look at, um, at this one uh, being played. Um, this was a um, similar bidding and here the opponent started with a spade and declare took that ace. They led the ace of hearts, okay. And now North led the jack of hearts. And East is about to make a mistake because East played the queen here. Now, let's have a little think about it, uh, about whether it makes sense for East to play the queen here. Well, normally second hand plays low, except your right to cover an honor with an honor, if it might promote a trick for your side. But if you think back, if I go back to the, um, to before the first heart is played, you know that East, you know you've got three hearts here, there are four in dummy, Declare has got at least four. So your partner could have started with no more than two hearts at the most. So when the ace is played and your partner follows, if they now play the jack, you should definitely not play the queen because there is nothing in your partner's hand to promote, okay? If, if they had, for example, the 10, it would drop um, on this trick because they can't have more than two hearts. So declarer, I don't know whether they were going to play, uh, going to finesse and let that jack ride, but East helped declarer here by covering an honor with an honor. And now declarer doesn't lose a heart. They win the king, they draw that last trump, and let's see what happened next. They then turn their attention to diamonds with the king, the queen, and the ace. And this declarer, again, has, is doing something very similar to the previous one. They, they're not roughing a diamond. They, they could have roughed a diamond to avoid a loser there. But instead, they've played, uh, they played the 10, they've discarded, and they've lost to the jack. Uh, so now this particular east played the king of spades, that got roughed, um, but Declare was able to play the three of diamonds, finally making a trick there, and uh, only losing one more club. So after this, this particular Declare managed 11 tricks there, they avoided the heart loser, and they only um, lost one, um, uh, one club, I think, in the end. One club and one diamond they lost, okay? Any comments on that one? Let's have a look at it played another way. Um, so this time, East, as we uh, as we looked at previously, some of the East led a diamond. And when the diamond is led here, you may think it's uh, obvious for North to play the king, but that's actually a mistake. Um, if you, normally you like to play win in the shorthand, but that lead of the diamond gave you a chance to avoid a diamond loser if you played low from dummy. So we'll look at it played later on in a different way. But if you play low from dummy, then you're either going to win a trick with your 10, or if they play their jack, you'll beat it and it will uh, promote your 10. So this declarer missed that chance by playing the king here. Let's see what happened next. Well, they played the ace of spades and they played another spade planning to rough a spade. And again, I'm you know, not very keen on this. I, I would much think a much better line is to draw trumps here. Now, this declarer wants to start roughing spades. Roughing in the long hand is not really helping. Um, they then has, still haven't touched trumps here. So they're playing their diamonds. And when they play a diamond, West gets to rough. Now you can over rough. Um, but it has meant that you didn't make a trick with your queen of diamonds. Now Declare is finally drawing trumps, um, but they played the king, or they're playing another diamond. And uh, again, they didn't rough that, so East was able to win that one. 
East now played a club, trapping the king. West tried to cash a spade, but that was roughed. And Declara now lost a club, roughed that one, and they're going to lose a heart at the end here. So this Declara again only made nine tricks, mainly due to not uh, drawing trumps and trying to rough diamonds. So that was an example of one not being played very well. Um, let's have a look at this one here. This time they led the eight of diamonds and this declarer did much better. This declarer realized that that eight of diamonds gives them a chance to play the diamonds better than they might have otherwise done by playing low from dummy. So if the jack is played here, they can now beat that with the queen, but now that has promoted the 10. I hope you can see that. The only danger in playing the diamonds that way is it, it makes it slightly awkward to, to cash the diamonds. But here, that shouldn't be a problem. You've got entries into both hands and it shouldn't really be a problem. So Declara here played the ace of hearts, played a heart. And again, they took the losing option of playing for the queen to drop. So they lost a trick there. Um, they then played a diamond. Uh, and then they need to get back to their hand so that they can cash their remaining diamonds. They did that with a spade and a, a spade rough. And then they were able to play the ace of diamonds, the 10 of diamonds, throwing away their losers. And the three of diamonds is also a winner. So East can get in with the queen of hearts. But after that, declare the defense can only take one trick. Um, but you can rough that and rough the last club. So this particular declarer made 11 tricks here. Okay, and let's look at it played one last time. Here the bidding was um, similar. Um, this bidding, in case you're interested, three spades, bidding the opponent's suit is showing support in for your partner suit, but they ended up in four hearts. And this particular West led the ace of clubs. And I think that is um, one of the worst leads you can choose there to lead an unsupported ace. In fact, if I switch back to the results from that evening, you can see that on the two occasions where players led their ace of clubs, both declarers made 12 tricks. So uh, I don't think it was a good choice. Anyway, let's see what happens. They led their ace of clubs. And then they played a diamond, the eight of diamonds. And Declara did well on this hand by not taking the king here, by playing low here, beating the jack with the uh, ace here. And then they played the hearts. And this Declara cashed the ace of hearts and then played a heart and finessed against East. So they played the 10 here, that won the trick. They now drew that last trump and then they played the diamonds and all their diamonds are good now. They take the king, they just need to go back to their hand, which they did with the king of clubs, and they cashed all their good diamonds, the queen and the ten. And they get in fact will now make 12 tricks on that one. So there they were helped a little bit by a poor lead um, of the ace of clubs. And also helped when West switched to a diamond, which uh, uh, allowed Declara to avoid losing a diamond. They didn't even have to worry about roughing it. Um, so I can I ask you something? Go ahead. Yeah, it's bit two, two spades and then not bit three spades. I did not understand the bidding. No. Well, so th th this particular pair, and, and they alerted this bid, uh, said that alerted the three spade as showing hearts. In other words, you may think that's foolish, but um, it, in response, when the opponents have overcalled, a lot of people will make a cue bid here to show mm. support for hearts. And it, it's a, it would tend to be a slightly stronger bid than just, for example, bidding four hearts. Okay. So if, the they, if they bid against you like that, you can you know, ask, what does that mean? What does the double then mean from East? <laughs> well, I would suspect the double probably means that East has um, reasonable support for spades. Okay, thank you. Okay, so it's sort of saying 
yeah, I'm, I'm happy with um, a, a spade lead if, if you get up on lead. Um, four diamonds there is um, presumably a cue bid showing that, you know, they've got a good hand in showing uh, first round control in diamonds, but they end up in four hearts anyway. So you probably won't get exciting bidding like that um, tonight, although if you play <laughs> on the, in the club game on Wednesday, you will get some people playing um, uh, conventions like that, and you're entitled to ask about what they mean. So that was it um, for this evening. Um, I, I hope you found that interesting. I, I, I thought that, you know, uh, even just that one hand, there were quite a lot of things to, uh, to see in that. And, and we know we covered, you know, choosing an opening lead, taking advantages of that lead, vacant spaces, an important one, thinking about the ways to play suit combinations when you know something about the suit distribution, making a plan, and also whether it's always right to cover an honor with an honor. So that's the end of the, uh, the topic. I'll, I'll end the talk there. And um, 